They say it every year that you build through the draft and then you maybe get a couple of pieces in free agency and you got yourselves a football team. Well, at least the Jacksonville Jaguars did a great job uh, through the draft, or at least we thought uh, through the 2021 NFL draft that is. And I think moving forward, this team's got a lot of pieces. Now I know Urban Meyer got fired and they're probably going to stick with uh, the interim head coach right now. And I understand that. But overall, I, I think the Jaguars uh, are in a place where they can be happy about their draft pick from this last year. Um, and I think uh, it, you got to be happy with it right now. Um, and I think, uh, you know, Daryl Bevel right now is in kind of a good spot. Is Daryl Bevel, I, I swear, he was was he the former OC for the Vikings back in the day? He's, he's done some good things. Um, but overall... I think Daryl Bevel and company should be happy with what they have in place. And I think, uh, I, no, I'm not sure, I haven't uh, seen anything at least if the Jaguars are actually going to hire another coach. But right now, I think just grading the draft picks, there's a lot of, of good stuff to go on. And if you take a look right here of all the things that they've gotten in this last year's draft, I think you're pretty happy. So obviously, first overall draft pick, Trevor Lawrence, quarterback out of Clemson. I think you like what you see so far. Has it been amazing? No. Has been the worst you've ever seen. Also, no. I think there's a lot to build through here. Over 3,600 passing yards this year, 12 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. And there were times where I was like, okay, he is in a place where he needs to continue to do his thing, but I'm overall very excited for what he will continue to do. Uh, and I'm very excited for how that will turn out because he's a good player. I think he's he makes a couple of those throws a game that you just like, okay, I see why this this man was was drafted number one overall because he can just straight up ball. Like he can just make plays and we all know it. So overall, I think this was a good pick for uh, uh, the Jaguars who have found their franchise quarterback for at least the next couple of seasons if they can build around him and build uh, some good defensive pieces as well. But I've liked what I've seen from Trevor Lawrence this year so far. Uh, also in the first round, of, uh, the Jaguars selected Travis Eddie in running back out of Clemson. Now he did get injured. I believe uh, it was season ending. Uh, yeah, it was season ending. Excuse me. I can't remember if it was a foot or ankle or whatever, but um, could not play this year. Um, like you get it. Like the, the Jaguars want to be able to do a lot of different things offensively and build uh, ob and, and do a lot of different things. So, I mean, that's great. You, you saw a lot of players, Jamal Agnew, LaVisca Chanel Jr. Like there's a lot of talent on this team. Uh, but if you can get him, uh, Trevor Lawrence, some protection and more weapons, uh, I I don't necessarily think that his weapons are that bad this year. Um, you know, James Robinson is one of the best running backs in the entire NFL. Doesn't get near the love he should. Um, and I think, you know, if you can get him some help in the offensive line, I think this team could be even better. But uh, Travis Eddie and I expect him to come back this next year uh, and be a, a good piece for the Jaguars moving forward uh, and help uh, kind of bolster those weapons for the young uh, quarterback out of Clemson. Uh, in the second round, uh, first pick in the second round, that is the they selected Tyson Campbell, a corner out of Georgia. I... I feel like Tyson Campbell was one of those players like you're like, okay, like you didn't know. I thought there were some better players on the board. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, he was he had a good year. He did. 73 tackles, two interceptions, had a finish the year with a 62.7 PFF grade, gave this one a B plus. Uh, you know, I think moving forward, he's going to be a, a building piece. Uh, he's going to be helping shut down. He's got the size you want, uh, and I think he's got the speed as well. So overall, this is uh, what you want to see from a, uh, from a young corner, uh, his, his first year in the NFL. I think he's going to be a piece that you build upon um, moving forward and got a year under his belt. We'll see what he can do in year two, but I think it was a good pickup by the Jaguars. Um, and I think that defense is going to be better for it. Uh, also in the second round, the Jaguars selected Walker little, even though he's not little himself, six, seven, three Oh eight, something like that man is big, big man. Uh, offensive tackle played in nine games this year, including three starts. Uh, did allow a couple of sacks, but got more playing time as the year went on, uh, had a 68.8 PFF grade. Um, I think he could be one of your tackles for the future. I absolutely think so. Or one of your offensive linemen for the future. Um, I think you don't draft a guy with that big and that, that much size uh, and playing in a tough uh, in a, a tough division or a tough uh, conference, excuse me, like Stanford did. So I think you saw some good things from a guy like Walker Little. And I think moving forward, he's going to be a good player uh, for the Jaguars. I think you continue to build around it. Again, if you want to kick him inside, keep him out of tackle, whatever you want to do. But I, uh, but overall, I think he's a good player. And I think he's going to continually build upon this year, his rookie year, and, and provide a lot for the Jaguars moving forward. Um, and I know, again, I know they got a new head coach. I know there's a lot up in the air right now. Uh, well, well, at least, you know, now that, um, at least 
now that they got rid of uh, Myra. Now, I do also believe that it, as long as they can continually build around Trevor Lawrence, um, and I, I think that's going to be the key here, and I think Walker Little gives them a, a great place to do that. Um, in the third round, they selected, the Jaguars selected Andre Sisco, safety out of Syracuse. I think, wasn't he like the top-graded safety in the preseason? Like, he was balling in the preseason. And this year, you know, played in all 17 games, had a total of three starts, tw including 26 tackles, a forced fumble, also had a 65.9 PFF grade. Like, this is what I'm talking about. You've got Tyson Campbell, Andre Sisco, two young pieces to your secondary that I think are going to build off their rookie years. You get the right coaching staff in there. You get the right players in there, and it seems to work wonders. So, and yes, they're going to have some, you know, some heartaches and some. Um, some moments that make you want to pull your hair out, but that's rookies. Like, that's just how it goes. It's part of the teaching. It's part of the development. And I think, you know, these two players in Cisco and Campbell are going to really help out this secondary for the Jaguars moving forward. In the fourth round, the Jaguars selected Jay Tufele, a defensive tackle out of USC. Don't get me wrong. I loved what I saw out of Tufele uh, from USC. I thought, you know, I think he had like three and a half sacks. I think he opted out due to COVID, hit what his junior or senior, whatever it was. Um, but overall, you like what you see from a guy like uh, Tufele. He's got the size you want inside there. He's a big boy. Uh, can get after the quarterback too. I think honestly, Fred Smoot and those boys just got a lot of um, a lot of playing time, and it, it's tough for a guy like that in the in the fourth round. Like you know, these guys are going to be uh, more on the edge of getting more of their playing time. Like it's going to be tough to put in a rookie over a guy like Smoot. So. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, Dwayne Smoot, why did I say Fred Smoot? Why, why does, I don't know that, but Dwayne Smoot, uh, you know, a lot of those guys got a lot of big playing time up front for the Jaguars. And I think moving forward, you could see a guy like Tufele that would, uh, that could come in there and, and play some, uh, some rock solid defense for the Jaguars on the inside there. So moving forward, Dwayne Smoot in this defensive line is pretty respectable. Malcolm Brown also out there. Um, Devon Hamilton is another name, obviously playing at nose right now. So, um, Roy Robertson Harris just doesn't get the time of day. I think he's a really underrated defensive end for uh, really any team. He, has, he also played inside, I believe, for um, the Bears back in the day. And then also Taven Bryan. I mean, just hasn't been awful, but also hasn't lived up to his first round status, if you ask me at the very least. So I think uh, moving forward, the uh, the Jaguars have a lot of different uh uh, they have a lot of different choices moving forward. And I think um, this is a good thing, though. You've got young talent like Tufele, um, Cisco, Campbell, all those boys coming in on the defensive side of the football that are, are very promising. Gave that grade a B overall because I think the future is bright for Tufele. I think you can continually incorporate him and see what he can do on the inside there. Again, hair pulling moments, yes, in rookie years, but you much rather have young talent that you can develop rather than not and have to bring in uh, you know free agents or draft other players that you have to further develop so i think this is a good start uh, for that interior defensive line for the jaguars and uh, we'll see how it pans out but i like the pick uh, fourth overall or excuse me whoa now in the fourth round number 121 overall the jaguar selected george smith defensive end out of the university uh, of alabama birmingham i believe that's what it is i really hope that's what it is because uh you know uab i, I want to say it was joe webb that came from the vikings that went there um but uh you know i think overall uh it is one of those things where you really kind of question this a little bit. Like you were kind of wondering like, okay, well, you do not know where or why they selected uh, a player like this uh, in terms of Jordan Smith at this position. I felt like maybe you could have got him in the fifth and I felt there was some better ta talent around him. But overall, um, I think, uh, you know, you got to just take flyers on these guys. Like these are development guys. Like if when you take a look at some of these different draft picks, like you, you know, the fourth round is going to be where you get those guys that you develop. Um, you know, I, I think, um, the Vikings were a perfect example like that. Uh, this year, they got guys like Cameron Bynum and, uh, down there, and you know he ended up developing really quickly. Uh, and that's kind of just one of those things. You take flyers on guys in the fourth round because you think that they can do some good things. And I think you know moving forward, uh, I think it does come down to the fact that you see more of a developmental prospect in Smith. So um, I'm just kind of waiting to see uh, what will happen moving forward. But I think, you know, you don't take a guy like that uh, in the fourth round without a, a specific purpose. Um, and I, like I said, you like it. You like his development. Uh, it, or at least you bank on his development, excuse me. But um, for me and my uh, and my um, and my thoughts here, I thought like, okay, you could have gotten Cameron Sample. Uh, there was also players out there like Ellerson Smith, um, you know, Chris Rump out of Duke. I mean, there was there's just a lot of talent here that I'm like, okay. Um, Janoris Robinson, who also went to the Vikings. Uh, Rashad Weaver, who, from my recollection, uh, had a pretty good uh, year with the Titans. So, or is having a pretty good year, I should say. So, uh, I think overall, um, you know, it's tough to bank on talent. And it's tough to find guys that will, uh, 
be or have big impacts. And I think, you know, you just you bank on ability here or at least on talent moving forward. And I think Smith has got the size. He's got everything you want. And I think uh, moving forward, he is going to be a good development prospect for the Jaguars. Uh, then you go on into the fifth round here at 145 overall. Luke Farrell, who caught uh, played in 15 games, caught seven passes for 56 yards. I could be wrong here. But the tight end position for the Jaguars, like, I got James O'Shaughnessy. Yes, you got Luke Farrell there. I think you're just going to want to upgrade. Like, you just... Uh, you you know you want to upgrade you want to get uh you want to get a good tight end there i mean i would have liked kyle pitts uh but i mean that, that obviously he was way gone uh you, you you're not going to trade back up in the into the first round with what you got i mean maybe but overall uh i think that the jaguars could look to upgrade the tight end position but overall i did like luke farrell uh I, kind of a blocking guy but also can come in and catch passes uh once again seven catches 56 yards and i think when you uh draft a tight end in the later rounds you you most likely uh, are looking for a guy that can come in and block and, and, and you know, catch some uh, swing passes or, or some tight end screams, uh, some once, uh, not screams, screens uh, once in a while. And I think Luke Farrell is that guy, but wouldn't count on him to be a, like a number one fantasy option for sure. Uh, but I think, you know, moving forward, he could definitely bring you something. Uh, if you continue, that's what you, that's why you draft these guys in the later rounds is to, is to develop them and see what they can do overall. And then obviously in the sixth round here, number 209, the Jaguars selected Jalen Camp, wide receiver out of Georgia Tech, had three games, including a start i believe for the texans so overall you know you may you're probably most likely going to cut these guys later uh, in the later rounds but overall these guys are around uh and i think you can do a lot of great things with this draft for um the jaguars moving forward does a lot to go off of you got your future franchise quarterback future franchise quarterback that's a tongue twister um you also got travis etienne who i think is going to come back this year and and show why he was a first round draft pick tyson campbell and andre cisco those two boys on the uh, defensive secondary for the jaguars have some promise walker little you know whatever you want to do with him do some great things i think he can do it um jay tufele still going to get in there in that d line uh you know jordan smith banking again on that talent and what he can do moving forward he's got the size he's got the strength the speed everything you like luke farrell you like what you see so overall uh, i was really encouraged by this draft class by the jacksonville jaguars and i think moving forward they're going to be uh they, this is a strong class like this is a class that you look back on in the next three to four years and you see okay this player was good this player and eh, not so much but that's just how it goes that i think i feel like that's a that's the tough part about drafting in the nfl but overall this is a good draft overall we would probably I think we would give it a B plus. Uh, there was, you know, three players out of that we, we ranked off of the B plus overall. But this is a good draft. This is a franchise building draft, and I think it was much needed for the Jaguars. But let us know what you guys think. Make sure you guys like and subscribe down below. Leave a like and a comment. It helps people find the show. I really appreciate all the support that we've gotten and continue to get. You guys are all truthfully awesome, and we love every single one of you. Check out our website at thesportsbreedpodcast.com. Also in the description down below, uh, just make sure you guys uh, check out all of our social media platforms so you guys can give us a like and a follow there also in the description you'll find our email which is uh you can email us at the sports bp at yahoo.com uh, for anything you'd like us to cover or you can put it in the comment section down below but let us know what you guys think about our grades for the 2021 draft picks for the jacksonville jaguars